Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia and I make content about veganism and animal rights activism. Today I'm going to be responding to a video that came up on my YouTube recommended a few days ago and uh, the video is titled Why I'm No Longer Vegan After Six Years and it's by a YouTuber called Amber Alexander. Little disclaimer before we start, I am not a dietitian or a doctor so if you are suffering with some of the issues that are being presented in this video then please do go to a health professional and seek medical advice. If you haven't already guessed, this is going to be touching on the topic of eating disorders and restricted eating, so if that's something that's triggering to you or something that you struggle with, then please do click off the video. Because we're going to be talking about food here, I also need to say that we have to be really careful when we lump veganism into the category of a diet, because it really isn't a diet, it's a moral philosophy, it's a way of life, it's not simply just about what you eat. When people become vegan for the sole reason of, you know, losing weight or because it's trendy or because their favourite like influencer has done it. This is actually just eating a plant-based diet. This doesn't have anything to do with veganism at all. I think we should make sure we separate those two things out. Okay, so let's just jump into the video. So I was vegan for over six years. I went vegan when I was 14 in May of 2016. I was a freshman in high school and I'd been looking into going vegan since seventh and eighth grade. So I was like 12, 13 when I started researching it. I found veganism through what I eat in a days on YouTube. I was a young child trying to figure out what I should eat to lose weight. And the vegan videos look the prettiest, so I was like, okay, let me click that. Also, I've talked before about how in elementary school I basically like developed a phobia of eating in front of people because I was afraid they would judge the food I ate and like if I was eating something ugly, then like I would be ugly. So if I could eat fresh fruits and vegetables, ooh, I'm vegan, my vegan meal, suddenly I felt like I wouldn't be as self-conscious. Like in my head, vegan foods were skinny foods. From this part of the video, I think we can already see that even before she found veganism, um, you know, she was searching online, what can I eat to lose weight? These maybe thoughts around food and potentially a, a bad relationship with food started off before she was even introduced to veganism and what veganism meant. She also saw that the vegan YouTubers were like the prettiest, and that, you know, she equated vegan, vegan foods with skinny foods. Off the bat, we can start to see that this isn't a very productive or healthy way of thinking. So if I was seen eating skinny foods, then suddenly I was like, all my problems were solved. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just how my brain worked at the time. I also did real research. I watched all the documentaries, read up on studies, saw how eating plant-based could really help the environment, used up less land, less water. Obviously, you're not hurting any animals. I was sold. It made sense to me, but I was so young. And the reason I looked into it was still not a great reason. My goal was to lose weight. Yeah, I, I mean, I think she's hit the nail on the head there. Um, she just admitted the reason that she looked into it wasn't a great reason. It was primarily to lose weight. I think it's great that she does mention that, you know, she watched the documentaries, she read up on the studies. I'm sure she found out more about factory farming, what that means for the animals. But once again, you know, she really came at it from a weight loss background. Something that was really damaging to me I don't know if many of you guys are familiar with the vegan community that was on YouTube in 2016, but it was so crazy. Like when people say veganism is a cult, that YouTube community legitimately was a cult. And I was like watching all their videos and eating it up, literally. To be clear, I don't think veganism is a fad diet, but within veganism, there are a lot of them. I was following these crazy vegan people that were pushing high carb, low fat, raw till four, 80, 10, 10, legitimately like pushing their young viewers to count their calories, make sure they weren't eating too many grams of fat every day. Their whole thing was like, you can eat as many carbs as you want, as long as you eat no fat, you'll never gain weight. So I was like, okay, okay, I'm doing it. The 80-10-10 diet meant that 80% of your calories came from carbs, 10% came from fats, 10% came from proteins. And the only way you can track that is by downloading a calorie counting app. So I was using my fitness pal like crazy, trying to make sure I didn't break their rules. And that lasted for like years during my childhood and core development years. Like I was going through puberty, I was in middle school, and I was counting my calories and going crazy. And I look back and I think it is so irresponsible that all of those YouTubers were pushing this crazy diet mentality on their young viewers. Yeah, so I am kind of aware of the specific like YouTube, vegan YouTubers that she's referencing here. I'm gonna be honest here, vegan or not, they sound like really problematic dieting techniques, probably pushed by people who are YouTube influencers rather than dietitians or medical professionals. And I think 
think they're really problematic. I think especially, like she said, with the young, um, the young audience that they had, you know, the majority of their subscribers are young, impressionable, often girls. It is really irresponsible to be pushing extreme cal calorie counting. It just fosters unhealthy behaviors and attitudes surrounding food. To put it out there though, problematic diets and dieting aren't just a problem within like the vegan community on YouTube. There are other like fad, unhealthy, irresponsible diets that are pushed, um, you know, like the carnivore diet to be specific. Also something worth mentioning is that if Amber hadn't have fallen into the vegan dieting section on YouTube, it may well have been the case that it was, you know, paleo, keto, sugar-free, or even the carnivore diet that she fell into instead. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that problematic fad dieting techniques aren't just a problem of the vegan community. I found something online by a lady called Rachel McBride. I think she's a registered dietitian. She says, most people with eating disorders have tried a ton of different ways of eating, low carb, keto, gluten, or sugar-free, etc. Veganism is often just another manifestation of the eating disorder, but that certainly doesn't make it the cause. You might've heard the name Freely the Banana Girl. She's crazy. And Mr. and Mrs. Vegan, they're crazy. I was getting Wow, and both of them I think like disappeared off the face of the earth. Like I have no idea what they're up to now. So for the first year or two of being vegan, I was super restrictive. I was using my fitness pal. If you don't know what that is, good for you. It's basically a calorie counting app. And because I was listening to so much nonsense online, I developed like a legitimate oil phobia. I actually can talk about this too. We both were like so anti-oil. If our mom like even sprayed a little bit of cooking oil on a pan, we would flip out and be like, mom, we didn't want oil. Don't put oil. And I would read every nutrition label. And if it contained any amount of oil, even if it was like the last ingredient, like smallest amount, I would not eat it. I also wouldn't eat anything that contained sugar. I think what's also been made clear by this point in the video is that veganism wasn't the problem in itself, rather the fact that Amber clearly had a really poor relationship with food. That had been going on for a long time. The oil and sugar-free dieting was, it was a whole kind of, it was all a network of, of problematic behaviours. At least that's, that's what it appears to me to be like. Also, if you're curious how I felt when I first went vegan, the first two or three months I felt amazing. I had more energy than ever. Um, I was going to my sports practices and like bouncing off the walls. And that's just because I was eating really fresh foods for the first time in a long time. I was drinking smoothies, getting my greens in. And I think those foods were just really nourishing to me and gave me a lot of energy. But I pretty quickly lost the momentum of planning out my meals properly. So I ended up not eating enough because you have to eat kind of a lot of vegan food to get enough calories. And I was just like, 14, 15 years old, I'm not able to plan out my meals properly. I'm just a kid. I ended up just like not eating enough calories and being super sluggish and so tired all the time. I actually got acne for the first time in my life. That's when my acne started, which lasted like three or four years until I started Curology LMAO. Love you, Curology. And later that year, I like fell into a really deep depressive episode. Also don't know if that was veganism or a puberty thing, but it was all happening at a weird time. I was really confused, didn't know what was causing what. So that was my experience with my first year of veganism. Then towards- Okay, so in this part of the video she was saying that you know the first few months after she went vegan it was good she had a lot of energy she says that after the initial period she began to lose momentum in the sense that she wasn't preparing her meals properly she wasn't eating enough and she also mentions that around this time she got acne which she had for then three or four years and she also suffered from depression poorly planned diets can be very problematic whether you're vegan or not i mean you know you can have a vegan diet that's only made up of beyond burgers and oreos um, and of course you're going to be very unhealthy and you're not going to be nourishing your body properly but then you could also be a meat eater who doesn't plan their diets properly and only ever has kfc and other fast food there's also um quite a common like narrative when people change things in their diets they'll change their diet whether it's to do with veganism or not they'll suffer from some sort of health problem people are often really quick to jump to say that the thing that they changed in their diets is then causing that health problem but you know Correlation doesn't always equal causation. It sounds like the acne and the depression were probably multifactorial. The fact that she wasn't eating very well, again, regardless whether she was vegan or not, she wasn't consuming the right things, she wasn't planning her meals, she wasn't eating enough. And then that coupled with the fact that she was going through puberty, we can't say that one thing definitely caused 
this and the other thing definitely caused that, but we can probably say that it all kind of contributed together. I would also like to point out here that a well-planned vegan diet made of whole plant-based foods can be not only nutritionally adequate, but also incredibly healthy and aid in the prevention of very common diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, certain cancers, including colorectal cancer, you know, as well as heart disease, and also just providing more fiber in our diets, which aid with um, digestion and prevent things like constant at the end of high school, I finally chilled out a bit. I started eating processed foods again. I relaxed about oil and sugar. And honestly, I was chilling, having a good time, being a chill, normal vegan until college started. And then I was sent to live in a dorm with no kitchen that I could cook in. I had to eat in the cafeteria every night. And the cafeteria just did not have adequate vegan options. And once again, I couldn't eat enough. So I was extremely tired, literally like sleepwalking through every day just because I wasn't fueling my body properly. Now, I can't comment on the quality of food in her college cafeteria. I wasn't there. It could have been really dreadful. However, she had been vegan since age 14. She'd been ve vegan for a while at this point. I think it's not unreasonable to say that there are ways around this. You know, if you're in college and um, the cafeteria doesn't have adequate vegan options, what are some of the things that you can do? For example, could she maybe have spoken to the catering staff, discussed um, in a mature way, you know, the lack of vegan options or that they weren't adequate? talked to them about it, made herself known so that they knew there was at least one vegan who was regularly trying to access their food? Could she maybe have even switched accommodation to, you know, a, a self-catered accommodation so she could cook her own food? Sure, this might have been a little bit awkward, it might have taken some extra effort, it might have meant some uncomfortable conversations with staff, but, you know, it's totally doable and for the animals it's worth it. Also, a huge thing that veganism did was it gave me an excuse to starve myself. In public and in group settings, the deep, dark part of my brain loved having an excuse to say, oh, sorry, I can't eat that. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm vegan, I can't eat that. So I guess we're, we're getting to the crux of the conversation here. You know, she states just outright that it gave her an excuse to starve herself. And this is a really, really common story around veganism and eating disorders. It is very well known that people with eating disorders and restrictive eating habits can use veganism and vegetarianism as a way to mask and hide their eating disorder. Being vegan provides a way to say no to certain types of food that is more socially acceptable than saying outright to someone, no, I'm not going to eat that because I'm struggling with an eating disorder. The science around veganism and eating disorders um, also sort of marries up with this principle, which is that veganism itself doesn't cause people to get eating disorders, rather that people already with restricted eating habits choose veganism in order to kind of hide their problem. I think we have to also separate these two things out. There's disordered eating, which just so happens to be on a plant-based diet, and then there's veganism, which is a movement and ideology about minimizing harm and reducing animal suffering. COVID hit. Boom, I got sent home. It was a long year in quarantine. It gave me a lot of time to heal and self-reflect, as I'm sure a lot of us did during that time. And it was just a big year for internal growth for me. I came to a lot of realizations. As I shifted from a teenager to a young adult, my priorities changed. I cared more about how I felt rather than how I looked. I realized the difference between my actual self and my physical body. And my physical body and the way it looks doesn't really matter. So yeah, the neurons in my brain were kind of connecting. I was starting to figure everything out. And during that time in isolation, my self-image skyrocketed. It got better. So when I finally went back in person for college, almost all of my restrictive eating habits had left the building. I was hanging out with my friends, we were getting dinner together, but during these really happy moments, veganism was still forcing me to restrict myself when I was eating with friends and just in general. In the past couple years, I'd felt like I'd healed so much and I was just done with my era of restrictive eating and I wanted it to be over with. I just wanted it out. I wanted to move on with my life. I wanted to be free, but being vegan was the last thing that was kind of holding me back. At least that's what it felt like. When you're vegan, you have to check every single nutrition label to make sure it doesn't contain milk, eggs, whatever. You literally can't escape it if you're vegan. You need to check every food to make sure you can eat it. If you're going out with friends, you can probably only eat french fries. It's either fries or a dry salad or a little fruit cup, unless you go through the trouble of picking a place that you can eat at. And that's what I was limited to for the past six or seven years of my life. I still had to check the nutrition labels, I still had to reject food when I was with my friends, and those behaviors mimic restrictive eating. Okay, so there's quite a lot to unpack here. She talks a little bit about like the amount of checking and sort of food um, label analyzing that you have to do as a vegan. And I think she's exaggerating a bit here. Um, you know, she'd been, she'd been vegan 
for about six years at this point once you're vegan for that long trust me you begin to know like in the supermarket for example you know okay these are the vegan products that I get every week. I know they're immediately vegan. I don't need to go and check them again. They're not suddenly gonna put like egg or lactose in the ingredients and in the recipe. So I don't think that's entirely true. Obviously, when you first go vegan, you do have to do that checking. And when you are looking, you know, at a new restaurant or a new product in the supermarket, then yeah, of course you've got to check. It doesn't take this kind of continual checking that she's she's kind of describing. Also, she said, um, that she could only, like, what did she say? Like, fries and a dry salad or something? Food lab. If you're going out with friends, you can probably only eat french fries. It's either fries or a dry salad. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't buy that. I mean, I don't know where she, where she lives. Maybe I should find that out, but... If it's in America, I can assure you that there will be other places with vegan options. You don't just have to eat fries and a dry salad. Even if you went to like McDonald's, they now have a McPlant burger. Even if you went to like um, Burger King, they have the, what's it called? The Vegan Royale, that's what it's called. I don't want to be mean, but I, I also want to question where are the places that she was eating that these were the only vegan options for her. Whilst it's not as extreme as I think she's maybe making it out to be, it is inevitable that there is some of this checking involved. And I think she is right when she says that this behavior can mimic eating disorders. It certainly can. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this later in the video, by the way. And as much as veganism isn't always tied to disordered eating, the behaviors follow the same pattern. And being at the point that I was where I felt like I'd healed so much and grown so far past my old habits, I just felt like I wanted to get rid of the last bad habit. By being vegan, I still had to overanalyze every food, check every nutrition label, and just follow those same patterns that were kind of triggering for me at that point, where I was just like, I don't wanna do this anymore. Like, it literally feels like I'm forcing myself to stay in this little box that I feel like I'm growing out of. And that's how I felt for basically the last full year of me being vegan. But I was reaching the point where I just wanted to mature and grow out of veganism. I think this is my least favorite part of the video so far. The fact that she says, I wanted to grow out of veganism. Growing out of veganism isn't really a thing. You don't wake up one day and suddenly think that gassing pigs to death in a gas chamber is okay. You don't suddenly think that, you know, forcibly removing a calf from their mother is acceptable. I think what she means here is that she wanted to grow out of that disordered eating stage of her life. And I totally understand that. If I'm being honest, I really wish she'd have said that differently. I think it really discredits the vegan movement. I think it kind of, again, throws it into this box of being like some sort of diet that like is just a phase in your life and it's just something that you do and you know a bit like sugar-free or low carb or something it's not it's different it's a moral and ethical movement it's a social justice issue it's about basic animal rights and making sure they're not suffering when they don't have to be i just really felt like i was missing out on the social aspect of food and that is like one of the most important parts of food i didn't want eating to have to be this huge process where i had to check every ingredient blah 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 you can still enjoy the social aspects of food without having to harm sentient animals in the process this is totally doable so for the two years and like four months that i've been vegan i haven't missed out on the social aspects of food at all. In fact, I would go as far to say that my social circle has expanded because of my veganism and doing like activism and outreach. But I am sympathetic to the fact that if your friends and family and like your close circle of people that you hang out with, if you're vegan and they are not vegan, it can be quite tough. It can be extremely tough, especially in social situations, especially sitting down for a meal together. And also in my experience, I enjoy food now way more than I ever did before I was vegan. I typed this out because I didn't want to word anything wrong. For the sake of my mental health, I simply can't spend any more time hyper-analyzing food in the way that veganism requires. For my mental health, I need to eat in a way that is casual, non-analytic, and free. I've been vegan long enough to have a big impact. I don't have to be vegan 24 seven for the rest of my life to be a good person, to save the planet, etc. I care about the environment, but I also care about myself. I find so much joy in cooking new meals, trying out new ingredients. I found so much joy in eating Doritos for the first time in seven years. I want to live a sustainable future. I want to grow my own food in a huge garden so I can have the smallest impact possible on our planet. But for my own mental health, especially right now while I'm in college, I want to be able to eat food without restricting myself. I want to eat food with my friends. I've loved being vegan. I love vegan food. I know you can be vegan without using it to fuel disordered eating. I know you can be vegan without feeling the burden that I felt. But in order for me to heal, I needed to step away from behaviors that were triggering me 
and pushing me further down a hole that I was trying to escape. Something that she says in this like paragraph that she's reading out is there are ways to be sustainable without being vegan. Yes, there are ways to be sustainable without being vegan in the sense that yeah, you can like fly less, you can drive an electric car, you can make sure you're recycling, doing all of these sort of things. But in terms of food, the science is really clear. In the vast, vast, vast majority of cases, animal-based foods have a much, much higher environmental footprints in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, land use, acidification, eutrophication, all of these metrics, generally animal products do a lot worse in. It's also the diet that most reduces animal suffering, and this is really important and shouldn't be overlooked. We can get quite bogged down with the environment, but fundamentally the whole vegan ideology and movement is about the victims, it's about the animals, it's about making the world a better place for them. You can't really spin that in a different way, there are still victims in this scenario. Yeah, okay, you can be sustainable, without being completely vegan, but I think it takes away from the main reason why we should be vegan, which is for the animals. I understand that now. I know where my priorities are. I know what sustainability, health, and animal welfare means to me, but I've also learned what self-love, grace, patience, and boundaries mean for me too. I need to keep myself well-fed, happy, and at the very least, functioning at a healthy level. My health comes first. Also, when in doubt, it's always better to have a diverse diet with lots of variety. I feel more relaxed and excited in my day to day. My relationship with food has been neutralized. I know most of my viewers are either my age or younger. I want all of you to know you deserve better than to use food as a weapon or a punishment for yourself. Food is just food. I think the last bit of her like speech that she does is really powerful, promoting the message to her younger viewers that you know, we deserve to eat, we deserve to enjoy food. I think I think she's right, I agree with that. Just to finish off, I want to talk a little bit more about recovering from an eating disorder or restricted eating habits on a plant-based diet and whether this is recommended, whether it's good to do this or whether it's not. There are so many success stories of people that have recovered um, and healed their relationship with food while still maintaining a plant-based diet and not having to reincorporate um, the body parts and secretions of sentient beings. However, and this is really important. Amber's specific recovery may not have been possible without reincorporating animal-based foods back into her diet. And it seems from what she's saying that she needed to reincorporate animal products in order to completely recover and rebuild a healthy relationship with food. However, she did mention earlier that she was committed to the ethical and environmental side of veganism. She'd watched the documentaries, she'd read up on the studies, she probably has seen what farming, standard industry farming practices look like, and I think we can assume that she still feels this way. You know, she probably still feels passionate about minimizing harm to animals. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but it seems like those reasons for veganism, whilst they weren't the main driving factor for her veganism, they still contributed to her decision. And if she's still interested in minimizing harm to sentient beings, which, you know, we should all be interested in, whether we're struggling with other things or not, then I don't think there's any reason why she couldn't go back to veganism or go back to eating only a plant-based diet um, in the future. Potentially, once she's really healed um, her relationship with food and once things that used to be triggering for her are no longer triggering, maybe she can go back to veganism. That could be a possibility. I found two comments online that show both sides of this topic very well and I'd like to read them out. Obviously they're anecdotal evidence, I don't know these people, um, they could be lying. Personally, I'm vegetarian. I went vegan when I was very young, brackets 13, and very much anorexic. I'm years into recovery but find it too easy to relapse when I go back to being fully vegan because it means looking at the ingredients and inevitably the nutrition facts on every new food I try having to look up everything ahead of time when I want to eat at a normal restaurant with family, that sort of thing. One day when these things aren't triggering for my eating disorder, I can hopefully return to being vegan, but right now it's just not safe for me to do so. Another comment that I found presents a completely different situation. I feel the ED1 is complicated. It depends on why you went vegan slash vegetarian. I was vegan for a long time before I developed anorexia and bulimia, so, it, so I didn't see the need to give it up when in recovery because it wasn't related. I think this shows us that some people are able to recover from eating disorders whilst still on a plant-based diet because their decision to go vegan was completely kind of separate from the eating disorder, if that makes sense. Also, it's worth mentioning that as time goes on, veganism will become less and less restrictive, especially when we have like lab-grown and cultured meat and dairy products one day, which will technically be vegan because no animal has to um, suffer. The people that are recovering from an eating disorder will be able to be vegan without having to be restricted in their diets at all because these new products will allow that to happen. Also, hopefully as time goes on, there will be more vegan um, 
refeeding products created. So Amber admitted it herself. She came to veganism because of weight loss. As she said in her own words, it gave her an excuse to mask her eating disorder and starve herself. However, this is not a problem of veganism as an ideology or movement, and we cannot use the fact that some people will turn to veganism to mask their restrictive eating habits as a way to discredit the vegan movement as a whole. And the science is pretty clear, veganism doesn't cause eating disorders. What does happen, however, is people use veganism as a way to mask and hide their restrictive eating. What Amber went through sounds extremely hard, and I can only imagine the journey that she's been on, and I don't doubt that it was really, really tough. And it does seem to be the case that Amber had to reincorporate animal products back into her diet in order to break away from those aspects of veganism that mimic restrictive eating in order to recover and I guess ultimately stay alive. In other words, it was a situation of necessity for her. This doesn't mean that she doesn't still believe in the ethical and moral reasons to be vegan. And I would hope that maybe when she's really healed this relationship with food, she could go back to veganism if she wanted to. However, many people are still able to recover from an eating disorder whilst following a plant-based diet and not compromising on their morals surrounding animal exploitation. And this is why we need nutritionists and doctors to be able to support people who still want to be vegan throughout their recovery to be able to maintain a plant-based diet and not compromise on their morals. And conversely, vegans should be able to trust that their nutritionists and their doctors and other healthcare professionals won't simply dismiss their veganism as a mask or something that's being used to hide their eating disorder and instead take it seriously, if it is for the right reasons, of course. We are also moving into a world where not wanting to slit an animal's throat for a sandwich is becoming more more and more socially acceptable. Vegan options are getting better and more diverse literally by the day. So whilst eating a plant-based diet might currently be seen as restrictive, it's getting less and less restrictive and is only trending in that direction. Thanks so much for listening to my video. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing and follow my Instagram, Olive the Vegan.